You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Bitcoin. Ether, Solana, Doge, and more. Cryptocurrencies and digital assets are taking the financial world by storm. This exploding market provides everything a savvy trader needs. Volatility, volume, and liquidity, provided you know how to find it. That's where we come in. Welcome to the Crypto Rundown. Each week, we'll break down the latest trading activity, trends, and developments throughout the world's leading crypto derivatives markets. If it's moving the crypto markets, then you'll find it on The Crypto Rundown. The Crypto Rundown is brought to you by Amber Data. If you're entering the digital asset class, you'll need access to granular on-chain and market data from multiple venues to power research, trading, risk management, and compliance. Amber Data delivers comprehensive data and insights into blockchain networks, crypto markets, and decentralized finance, empowering financial institutions to apply traditional finance methods to digital assets. Amber Data eliminates the infrastructure setup, integration challenges, and maintenance headaches to access digital asset data, reducing cost and time to market to enter the digital asset class. Learn more and download their digital asset data guide at www.amberdata.io. Now it's time to dive into the exploding world of crypto derivatives. It's time for the Crypto Rundown. All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again. It is Monday. It is 2 p.m. Central. It is 3 p.m. Eastern. Do you know what's going on in the world of crypto derivatives? Well, let's find out together, shall we? Because it is time for the Crypto Rundown. My name, of course, Mark Longo from the THG, OptionsInsider.com, as well as from the network upon which so many of you are binging, reminding you at the top of the show, if you're just listening to the Crypto Rundown, and we see you folks coming in all the time, a lot of you crypto natives coming in, Crypto curious, shall we say? You want to learn more about what's going on, on the derivatives front? Maybe options and derivatives, not your strong suit. Well, first off, welcome. Secondly, you should be checking out the rest of the network. A lot of great educational content there for you to get you up to speed on all this stuff we're going to talk about here on the show and a whole bunch more. So wherever you're listening to this, your iTunes, your Google Podcasts, Audible, wherever, YouTube, make sure you listen into the full network. And then, of course, if you want more in your lives, and who can blame you at the end of the day? We all have questions. Luckily for you, we have great pro Q&A sessions to answer those questions. Some of the best minds in the world of options and derivatives and indeed crypto. Come on in to tackle all of your questions. Of course, great episodes like Options Oddities, where we look at unusual activity, giveaways, live streams, all kinds of fun. The optionsinsider.com slash pro, the place to go to sample all of those weirs. And joining me on the old crypto hot seat again today, I'm pleased to welcome back our old friend, None other than Mr. Bill himself, Mr. Bill Ulibarri from Cynical Capital Management, and now, of course, an author as well, a published author out there. Mr. Bill, welcome back to the Crypto Rundown program. Well, thanks for having me. This is great to be back with you, Mark. You always have good timing. You always join us on the show when things are popping off in the world of crypto. So we have a lot to yeah. talk about today. Mm -hmm. Let's get to it. A little bit of the old Bitcoin breakdown. It's time to explore the latest trending activity, trends, and developments across the world's leading crypto market. It's time for the Bitcoin Breakdown. All right, everybody. Let's do it. Let's dive on into all the action in the world's leading digital asset. We're talking about the big dog, which is Bitcoin. Looking a wee bit bigger. Dare I say it, effervescent, frothy, volatile again. Today in particular, getting... 
some shades of, of old school Bitcoin out there. Of course, you may have seen it, listeners. There were some rumors flying fast and furious just earlier this morning out there that this long rumored, much anticipated spot Bitcoin ETF was going to be approved very soon. I'm not sure where these rumors came from, but they were swarming the old interwebs this morning, sent Bitcoin soaring north. Of course, that's the thing a lot of people have been waiting for, really where they think the rubber is going to meet the road out there. You know, the the stuff out there with Bitto, it's cool. It trades the futures. For a lot of people, that's still a bit of a half step. They don't want to play with the futures. They want to, they want to own a spot Bitcoin ETF that tracks the spot Bitcoin one-to-one. That's what they want. And so they've been waiting for that moment. The SEC obviously dragging its feet on that. For whatever reason, those rumors started flying fast and furious this morning. Sent Bitcoin soaring up to almost 30000 as we're uh, kicking off the show. Coming back to earth a little bit. Still north on the week. Almost exactly 1,000 handles. 28,537 is where we were hanging out when we kicked off the show. Again, it's up nearly 1,000 points. 985. From where we were this time last week, 27,552. And again, threatening 30K just earlier this morning. So within spitting distance of it earlier this morning. So that was our high just coming not too long ago. And the low came Thursday, 26,558. So we did a lot of living in Bitcoin over the course of the past week. We've done a lot of living since your last appearance on the show about a month ago. Uh, but we got to start with the the kind of breaking news, the breaking rumors, Mr. Bill. Uh, what were your thoughts when you heard these rumors this morning? That's something you and I have been talking about on this show going back uh, for years now. You've always been very optimistic on the prospect of this ETF finally coming to pass. I think we talked about it on your last appearance about a month ago. So what were you thinking when you saw these rumors flying fast and furious this morning and Bitcoin climbing almost to 30,000 and now maybe settling back to earth? I said out loud, I said to myself, oh, it figures. Because I've been banking and betting on a spot Bitcoin ETF since like 2017, since you and I first started talking about this. And on the last show, I said, no, nope, it's not going to happen in 2023. It's, uh, it, we're done for the year. And then, of course, the first time that I say it's not going to happen, that's when uh, I get jinxed and they do potentially pull out on a regulatory front a spot uh, Bitcoin ETF. So I was kicking myself and laughing, actually, when I heard the news. Uh, But we'll see how it goes. I mean, we're we're running out of time. The clock is ticking for 2023. So let's see how it goes. Well, aside from the big news of this morning, what else has been catching your eye in the world of Bitcoin since your last appearance or over the past month? Well, over the past month, I've noticed something really interesting, and that is not Bitcoin specific, but that JP Morgan debuted a tokenized collateral network. The man who said, if I catch any of my employees trading Bitcoin, they're fired. And guess what? They actually created their own collateralized network. So guaranteed BlackRock, Barclays, JP Morgan, all the big guys, they're they're billing on the back end. And they're just not talking about it that much. And they're going to be exchanging collateral on a blockchain that settles instantaneously because the transmission of the collateral and its settlement happens in the same you know, fell swoop in the, in the same few seconds. So I, again, once again, I'm not saying I'm surprised because we've been talking about this again, Mark, for, you know, five years or more. But um, these digital, you know what? It isn't, you know, Garen, SEC Gensler's got it wrong. He says that all cryptocurrencies and tokens are securities. I think the opposite is, is, opposite is true. All securities will be tokenized, and that's the direction we're going. Could very well be the case. You're right, uh, Mr. Diamond. No fan of Bitcoin in the early days there. You're right. Threatening to fire people. What do you say? It was a scam and a fraud and the home of, you know, money launderers and terrorists. Uh, Some of those headlines being repeated now with all the news coming out of the Middle East out there these days. We won't dive into that madness Mm -hmm. on this show out there this week. But a lot, lot flying fast and furious in the world of Bitcoin. Let's see how all of this is playing out from a vol and skew and all sorts of other fun perspectives. Remember, if you want to see these numbers, this data for yourself, as well as a whole bunch more, we really just kind of scratched the surface of what they have to offer. Only one place to go, amberdata.io, A-M-B-E-R-D-A-T-A dot I-O. You can see all this data and literally a metric ton more. <laughs> if you could weigh data, I'm sure it would weigh a ton out there at the end of the day. But coming into the start 
of the show, we had the 30-day vol, which is kind of, again, the standard measure everyone usually uses when they're talking about volatility. That's what VIX is at the end of the day. It's a 30-day measure of S&P volatility. So when you're talking volatility, people are usually talking about 30-day. These days, with everyone fixated on zero DTE and weeklies, 30 days may be too long. But uh, that's kind of the gold standard. So 30-day vol right now in Bitcoin at about a 35, 35.6 to be precise out there. Puts it up about 2.5 points. We're at about exactly a 33 this time last week. So for all of the drama that has gone on in the intervening week since our last show, vol not exactly exploding. It's frothier. It's heftier. So again, a move to the upside equating to a little bit more vol, which might be surprising to some folks who are used to you know, the, the nomenclature of market goes up, VIX goes down. But again, that's just equities. There's a whole world of volatility, a whole world of skew out there and other products. Just look at what we talk about in this week in futures options with commodities and gold and everything else. They all move to the beat of their own drummer. And crypto is no exception to that rule. So we're seeing Bitcoin up and vol up a little bit this week, which is interesting. Let's go out a little bit farther. Let's see what the cooler, calmer, saner heads are up to. Let's say six months down the, down the chain there, down the term structure. And the ball out there, about a 45.3, coming in a little bit, actually, which is interesting. It was about a 46 even on our show a week ago. Now, we're talking about all this near-dated fixation. Uh, we got we to gotta play along with it here on the show as well. We're not quite going zero-day skew. We haven't gotten there yet, or zero-day vol. Um, I'm still not on board, maybe, with that concept. Zero-day vol at the end of the day is just gamma to me. But maybe that's the old-school market maker in me. But let's go. I'll give you a weekly. Let's go out a week, listeners. Let's go out to the week and see what the skew is in one week from now. And looking at going out one week in the options. And right now it's slightly positive. Positive one and a half. That's a bit of a swing. It was negative 1.7 on the show this time a week ago. So a about a three-point swing to the upside, all things considered. If you go out 30 days, go back again to that gold standard for skew. It was almost a negative two this time a week ago. So showing slight bearish concern sentiment out there. Right now it is almost exactly flat. So showing there is really no bias, no concern, no premium in either the calls or the puts out there 30 days in Bitcoin. You go still farther, you go out six months, listeners, and now you're talking, again, long term, the bias in crypto is usually to the upside. Just ask Mr. Bill. He's always biased to the upside in all these products. <laughs> it's about a five, a little, actually a little more than that, about a 5.1 out there. It was a four even on our show last week, so up a little over a point out there as well. And in terms of OI, what's open for size out there on Deribit right now? The answer is not a ton. Put-wise, there's 90,000 contracts open. That's literally unchanged from what it was a week ago. And on the call front, 215,000. That's up slightly, up about 22,000 contracts on the week. Again, trying to rebuild the OI that was lost with September expiration, which always hits the crypto assets the hardest. Mr. Bill... Anything out there catching your eye or indeed your ear on some of those numbers I just ran down, vol-wise or skew-wise? Any surprises for you, or is that pretty much what you expected, sir? I would say, Mark, that again, the very first chart I look at every single day is the U.S. dollar. And when the U.S. dollar rallies, it seems like our assets get depressed, and we get a little bit of a pullback, and that typically increases the VIX indicator, right, the, the volatility we see to the spike to the upside. So I'm not going to say I'm really surprised. Um, you know, there's so many things going on in terms of, you know, the, the, the global situation, global peace, right, global war, verge of war, uh, you know, the, the Russia-Ukraine issue, interest rates, real estate. I mean, I, I don't can't remember a time where there were just so many really interesting developments at a crossroads, so to speak. And I think we're here. We're at it again. Right. Soon we're going to have we'll be coming across, you know, an election. We have this um, uh, the happening cycle for Bitcoin coming up in a few hundred days. And so there's so much going on. But anyhow, the U.S. dollar reigns supreme, in my opinion. And I am kind of surprised that the VIX did pull back and get back as much of its upside gain as it did recently. But, you know, the VIX is its own little animal. And I, and I don't watch it as close as I used to. Uh, but again, because the, I used to, the VIX was the very first chart I looked at. Now it's now it's the U.S. dollar, and we've had a little bit of a pullback in the dollar, and that's typically good for assets. Let's see if it's good for some other crypto-related assets, including Mr. Bill's favorite, good old Bitto, at about a fourteen sixty-five when we kicked off the show. So looking frothy again, getting lifted by all those rumors popping off out there today. Up, not quite a point, but pretty close to it. Up about point eight 
from where it was on the show a week ago. Uh, the ADV continuing to move in the wrong direction, 16,000 contracts a day, down 1,000. But interestingly enough, that ain't the case today, listeners. Uh, those rumors really amounting to a whole heck of a lot of paper going up in Bitto today. Nearly 70,000 contracts on the tape when we kicked off the show today. We haven't seen numbers like that in Bitto in quite some time. There was a while there when it was averaging 90,000 contracts, 100,000 contracts a day. Obviously, it has retreated quite a bit from that. But today, conspiring listeners to put up a whole bunch of paper. Like we said, almost 70,000 contracts on the tape. I'm looking right now as we're talking. Uh, the big trade out there today in terms of individual size trades was about 1,200 of the October 15 call. Someone bought them for 19 cents this morning. Like I said, we're at about a 14.65 listeners. So they expire this Friday. So again, that goes back to the near dated phenomenon. Everyone wants near dated upside, and that's pretty much what they're getting. We also saw a thousand of the D16 calls going up for 26 cents earlier today as well, and a thousand of the Nov 11 puts. It's like paper selling those for a whopping four cents. So <laughs> not a ton of excitement on that front. In terms of uh, the most active contracts going up today, what was what was lighting it up out there? It was, again, those OC 15s. Someone's really liking those today. Nearly 10,000 of those have traded today, followed by about 5,000 of the no 14 puts. So, again, back to the put front, which is interesting, and about 5,000 of the OC 14 puts. So maybe a bit of a put roll going up out there as well. Mr. Bill, nearly 70,000 contracts going up out there in Bitto today. I got to imagine what? At least 10, 20,000 of that is you, sir? No, 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 not, not even in my dreams. No, not for sure. You know, really interesting, you know, Mark, the last time that we had a conversation about Bitto, I decided to dig in a little bit further. And you and I were talking about the yield that Bitto offers. And I find it interesting because when you own Bitto, I, I think you own U.S. Treasuries as well, because the yield that comes from Bitto is from this massive position that they have in U.S. Treasuries. So when you're long Bitto, you're long bonds as well, at least my perspective. you know. And if there's any listeners can prove me, not just prove me wrong, but if they disagree with me, I mean, let us know. But the, the Bitto yield doesn't come from like backwardization and contango. It comes from that uh, 50% of the, of the AUM is held into U.S. Treasuries paying like 5%, and the rest is in futures contracts. So – I don't know. I mean, this is interesting. Uh, when you're long Bitto, you're long Bitcoin and you're long bonds. So that could be the trade for 2024. Who knows? That's interesting if that is indeed the case, because I, I had always attributed it to, you know, of course, you know, the roll yield they have going on out there, which is a little bit different than what we see in traditional products like a VXX, where it's that negative roll yield. Not really the case out there in Bitto. Uh, so there is times where they're rolling and they're actually they actually are profiting on it. A little mm -hmm. bit out there. And also, if you look at the dividend, it is highly correlated to the periods when Bitcoin is shooting up. That's when the, the dividend is obviously the, the strongest. Like this past month, they didn't really have one for September because Bitto was, was cratering during that period. So there really was no, no positive roll yield to be harvested out there. But if you go back to August, it was $0.38. Cents. July, when we saw a nice little pop in Bitcoin, it was $0.66. Cents. Uh, mm -hmm. So it does seem like it's correlated to that. I haven't really looked into the... The treasure, I knew they do obviously hold some treasuries because you can't have it all in the futures all the time. But I'll have, to, I'll have to go dig in. Maybe there's something to what you're putting down there, Mr. Bill, the correlation. At the end of the day, if you're long Bitto, you're long Bitcoin, and you're long some treasuries. So there you go. A little bit of yield on both fronts, sir. How can you lose? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever wins, you win at the end of the day out there. You lose half your money. You never go broke. Yes, exactly. There you go. There you go. Uh, right now, in terms of top positions in Bitto right now, let's do a quick top five listeners. 29,000 of the Jan 20s for number five. Number four, 41,000 of the Jan 2025. 25s, number three, 64,000 of the Jan 2025. 35s, number two, 68,000 of the Jan, regular Jan 65s, and the number one size position in Bitto options. 83,000 of the Jan 30. Just imagine, Mr. Bill, if we do get that spot bitcoin etf approved just imagine the options flow we'll be able to break down here man the sky is the limit it's going to be insanity dogs and cats living together i look forward to that day mr bill welcoming you back on the show where you and i can really sink our teeth into a little bit of whatever it's called the spot etf options flow won't that be a fun day mr bill oh my gosh we're gonna to have to celebrate with 
bourbon and cigars and, <laughs> and a nice steak dinner because oh. it would, had been long awaited and much deserved. That sounds like a plan. Bam, there we go. Off to the races. Mr. Bill, you and I tearing it up at Gibson's. How does that sound? Perfect. Right. Perfect, perfect, perfect. <laughs> While we're waiting for that day to come, listeners, let's keep on going and explore the altcoin universe. It's time to move beyond Bitcoin and find out what's moving the rest of the crypto marketplace. It's time to boldly venture into the altcoin universe. All right, everybody, welcome to the altcoin universe, the portion of the show where we explore everything going on outside of the big dog, which is Bitcoin, except for right now when we're talking about a little bit of the old market cap. And weirdly enough, it still costs you a little bit below $8 billion to break into the top 10. About $7.8 billion is what it costs you to break into the top 10. Right now, I'll get you to our old friend Tron, still hanging out at the number 10 spot. A uh, number nine, another old friend. It's good old Doge. Maybe you love it. Maybe you hate it. For a long time, it had a, a death grip on the number eight spot. It has since been kicked down to number nine. 8.4, almost 8.5 million worth of market, excuse me, 8.5 billion worth of market cap. For good old Doge, number eight, it's Cardano. 8.8 .8 billion worth there. Number seven, it's Solana. Shooting up this week, $9.8 billion worth of market cap for number seven. Number six, USD coin, $25.2 billion. Number five, our old friend XRP, $26.5 billion. Number four, BNB, $32.5 billion. Number three, it's Tether, $83.5 billion. You know what number two is, listeners. Number one in a lot of your hearts. Or maybe not. Maybe it's fading. Who knows? Hit us up. Let us know. It's ETH, $190 billion worth of market cap. And the big dog, Bitcoin, $553 billion worth of market cap. Let's get on into uh, good old ETH. And, you know, for all this, this rumor mongering, all this sturm and drong going on in crypto, you would never really know it by if you just fired up ETH show to show. We were at 1578 on our show last week, 1583 when we kicked off the show this week. Up a whopping five handles on the week. You might be like, big whoop, twiddling my thumbs out there. Had a little bit wider range in between that, though, listeners. The low came uh, last Thursday, 1523, and the high obviously coming this morning, uh, north of 1600, 1635. So a decent range out there on the week, listeners, even if net show to show, not a heck of a lot going on. Uh, that means our vol mostly treading water on the week. We were a little bit north of 30, almost a 31 on the show last week on the 30-day vol. It's a lot of 30. Say that five times fast. Uh, coming into the start of the show this week, our 30-day vol hanging out at exactly a 30. So there you go. 30 for 30 out there in ETH vol this week. Let's go out a little bit farther. Let's go out six months, see what's cooking out there. And again, kind of the same deal. Treading water. We were 41 and a half on the show last week. 41.8 to kick off the show this week. Uh, Skew-wise, let's get close to home. Let's go into the weeklies, listeners. Last week, it was almost negative six, negative five and three quarters. So the sentiment, the concern, very much bearish on the show on the weeklies last week. This week, still bearish, but coming back a little bit. It's only negative three, about 3.1 when we kicked off the show. Let's go out a month. Let's see what's going on from a skew perspective there. Last week, it was still bearish, negative six, about negative 6.3, actually. And coming into the start of the show this week, about negative 4.3. So coming in about two points, but still Lean in towards the dark side. And if we go out six months, listeners, that's usually skewing, pun intended, towards the upside. And that's the case again this week. It was about a positive 1.4 on the show last week, coming in to start the show this week, about positive two and a quarter. So near dated, people are a little bit concerned, looking a little bit longer term. They are flat to slightly optimistic. Uh, Mr. Bill, I know you pay attention to all things ETH out there. What's catching your eye this week in the number two crypto asset, sir? Well, you know, I got to be honest with you, Mark. I was looking at the charts of Ethereum and Ethereum Classic, and it looks a little bit heavy. I mean, you know, we used to say that Bitcoin, when the Bitcoin would rally, it was this, you know, it would it would raise all ships, right? When when Bitcoin would take off, all cryptocurrencies would kind of do well. And it just seems to me that Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, and some of the oldies like Cardano, uh, it just, uh, it just does. They didn't respond like I would have expected with such positive news coming, not only because of the spot ETF, but also just as we approach the happening cycle. It just looks surprisingly heavy to me, and I'm not quite sure what's going on. But I, I am. I'm not concerned for Ethereum. I'm just saying I'm a little bit surprised at how heavy it seems with all the positive news that's been coming out. 
I have to admit, I had a similar thought when I was looking at that top 10 from a market cap. I expected to be at least over 10 billion or close to it. And instead, we're back below 8 billion again in terms of breaking into the top 10. So you're right. The rest of the crypto universe, aka the altcoin universe, sir, didn't really carry along, at least the top coins, the top assets out there, didn't carry along with all the upside love that was going on in Bitcoin, which is interesting in and of itself out there. Maybe some some correlation change-ups going on in the crypto space. I just saw something recently about how the Bitcoin dominance is stronger than it's ever been. So uh, kind of interesting to see that the rest of the altcoin universe not really playing ball with this latest move in Bitcoin. Speaking of the rest of the altcoin universe, uh, let's break down some that I want to get to Mr. Bill. He always comes on the show armed with a couple of interesting altcoin in his back pocket that chances are you've never heard of, listeners. Before we get there, let's, let's break down some of the rest of the altcoin universe. Usual suspects out here. We'll start with Solana. It was at about a little north of 22, about a 2208 on our last show. 2365 kicking off the show today. Up about a buck and a half, almost a buck 60 since our last show. So a nice little pop there for Solana. Uh, XRP... Can't seem to get out of its own way these days. 50 cents last week, 49 and a half cents this week. So quite literally treading water on the week out there. I know a lot of people were excited when those court rulings came down a few months ago. That was going to be the beginning of the upside swing in XRP. And we saw that ever so briefly. And then kind of, yeah, not so much. Just kind of fell back right to pretty much where it's been hanging out forever, right around the 50 cent level. Uh, Dogecoin, you know it, you love it, maybe you hate it. Same deal, almost 5.9 cents last week and about 5.9 cents this week. So up slightly, but nothing crazy out there. Uh, Litecoin, 62.5 cents, 63.9 cents this week. So a nice little pop about, actually it's almost 62.60 last week, so right around a buck thirty uh, to the upside in a Litecoin. Let's run down a few others. Cardano, again, treading water. Going back to what Bill and I were just saying, doesn't seem like the rest of the altcoin universe really got caught up in all this furor out there, 25.1 cents last week, 25.1 cents this week, and Polkadot, 383 last week, a whopping 376, so actually giving up a whopping 7 cents on the week. I won't even bother with Shiba listeners, it's kind of uh, treading water out there as well. So Mr. Bill, instead of all these kind of boring also-rans in the crypto space that weren't really up to much this week, I know you always come armed with a couple of intriguing new names and new tickers for our listeners to investigate. So what do you have in your back pocket this week, sir? Mark, I have to apologize and say that I don't have any one particular uh, project in mind, and I'll tell you why. That's it. You're off. You're gone. Never again on the show for you, sir. (laughs) Because I... I, I looked at it. I went through about 150 charts, uh, 175 charts before the show. And previously I said, uh, you know, in previous episodes, you know, I think the low is in for crypto. It was like July, June or July of 2023. We put in the low in the, uh, you know, in, in other indexes. And now I'm beginning to see, as we just said a few minutes ago, how maybe Ethereum was a little bit heavier compared to what we expected. And I'm seeing that actually across the board. I mean, there were some great projects, uh, you know, Tron, Cardano, like you said, XRP, uh, Algo, uh, just, you know, there's tons of projects that looked really interesting. And it appeared to me on a technical basis that they had put in a low because they just, we we just saw they didn't, even when the market took, you know, got tanked last uh, summer of this year, it didn't really we didn't really see it a- across the board so i'm kind of concerned that there is something kind of going on one token that i do like and i'm going to be honest with you this is up to every listener to check into cuz i don't know the project very much i just know that i like the way the chart looks and that's celo celo or cello c e l o is the token it looks kind of interesting to me. It's trading around thirty-nine, forty cents, uh, forty-two cents per token. I think it's an Ethereum offshoot. You know, it kind of runs on that that blockchain. But I'm going to have to dig in a little bit more. But I'm telling you, Mark, I'm not getting a lot of feedback and a lot of love from the charts that I looked at this morning, and I, that just has me a little bit concerned. I can't explain it. I'm just saying that it is, and I'm. I got, I've got to be way more – it used to be easy just to throw out a, a, a project and a token and say, hey, take a look at this one. But I think we have to be more discerning. We have to be really more careful with this stuff and not throw our caution and our assets to the wind. So, 
You know, this is a tough time, Mark. Like I said, this is a tough time. I don't know. You're usually on here, the ray of sunshine shirt is talking up everything. I think you've said in the past on the show, you want to buy all of it. And these days now you're, you're sounding a little bit more bearish, a little bit more skeptical. So you might be spooking some of our listeners. If Mr. Bill doesn't want to buy it, who wants to buy it? They might be asking themselves <laughs> right now. Oh, let's keep it rolling then. Maybe we'll get a little bit more optimism here as we wrap things up with our crypto question. You've got questions about crypto. Who doesn't? It's time to find out the answers to your crypto questions. All right, everybody. Welcome to the crypto questions. You folks get at us. All the social media platforms at options, usually our handle out there. Or, of course, uh, for all of our pro members, they can use our members hotline. Just our, like our pro member Mackenzie did here this week. She wants to know, hey, are you guys excited for the new short ETH ETF. If you're wondering what she's talking about, listeners, ProShares, they of Bitto fame and or infamy announcing this week, they have a trio of new Ether ETFs coming to market. Again, these are all based off the futures. So if you're excited for a spot Ether ETF, you have to keep waiting out there. And their latest offering is what they term the ProShares Short Ether Strategy ETF. That's going to launch in November. Again, listing off of the futures uh, over there on CME is going to try to be an inverse Ether ETF out there, which, again, we have a lot of different offerings in the crypto ETF and ETP space, not as much yet on the inverse side. So here you go. If you were waiting hungry for a short and inverse ETH ETF, then there you go. Looks like it's going to list in November out here. So intriguing stuff. Mr. Bill, I know you're an ETH guy. We were just talking about it earlier. You kind of, you were just saying, actually, you think maybe these charts look a little heavy. So maybe from that perspective, sir, maybe this is the ideal time to launch an inverse ETH ETF. What do you think of these offerings, sir? You read my mind, Mark. You read my mind. Okay, I want to buy everything now. <laughs> because, you, you want know, to buy all of it, as short... long as it's inverse, you want to buy it. Yes. <laughs> uh, I mean, yes. I mean, let's listen. I've got to look at the big picture. We have the U.S. dollar has had this tremendous rally recently where there's four parts of every economic cycle are expansion, peak, contraction and troughing. Expansion we saw post COVID, you know, at the end, right when COVID hit in March of 2020, we put in a low like in June and we were off to the races. Peak stock market and asset class risk on was, I would say, in the fall of 2021 when Powell was like getting ready to raise interest rates. We saw contraction in everything. You saw all the technology stocks, the QQQ, Moderna, all the pharmaceuticals began to this massive sell-off in 2022, as well as all the bond market and commodity market, lumber, crude oil, copper, nickel, corn. I mean, everything risk just got crushed in 2022. Now we're trading way, sideways. We have a five and a quarter, five and a half interest rate. And you know what? We're in part four of a four-part economic cycle being troughing. The next part is expansion. So now they're coming out with short ETFs when we're at the beginning of an expansionary, you know, monetary uh, cycle. Okay. I'm, I'm, thank you so much for telling me about the, the short ETFs because I wasn't, didn't have my finger on the pulse there. Yeah, this is it. We got to buy this stuff. We got to buy bonds. We've got to buy preferred securities we've got to own crypto i mean we need to we need to do risk on because i'm telling you it's yeah this is it thank you mark i appreciate the, the contrarian opinion that i've now got myself on since uh the beginning of this conversation don't thank me thank our pro listener mckenzie she's always on the bleeding edge of all things crypto out there so thank you mckenzie for letting us know yes we i can speak for bill he certainly sounds excited and and you know me mckenzie at the end of the day more options pun intended uh, for our listeners to trade out there is always a good thing, especially when it comes to crypto. I know for a lot of you, uh, the future's non-starter. You're going to wait for the spot. I get it. I get it. But for if you can't wait that long, you want to trade something that is going to be uh, have a little bit of volume, a little bit of liquidity, and hopefully be optionable uh, pretty soon, then these ETFs are your next best step. And it's a way to get exposure to these things and trade options on them in a securities account. So you don't, even though they trade the futures, you don't have to be futures approved. So that's a nice thing. Nice little end run around for all of you out there who want to trade this stuff in your securities account. All right, Mr. Bill, that music means we've come to the end of another journey. 
through the world of crypto for this week. But before we go, if folks are intrigued, maybe they want to check out what you're cooking up in the world of crypto. Maybe they want to check out your book. But where should they go? What should they do, sir? Just go to Amazon.com and type in my name, Bill Uliveri. That's U-L-I, V as in Victor, I-E-R-I. And it comes up the, uh, the Essential Estate Professionals Toolkit for Recovering Cryptocurrency. This is a book that I wrote primarily for estate planning professionals to help spur a conversation and help keep track of inventory of your listeners' cryptocurrency. Because it's not so easy recovering cryptocurrency for your heirs and your benefactors after you've passed away. There's some vital information needs to be recorded ahead of time and important conversations between you and your fiduciary or estate planning attorney. So buy a copy for yourself, give it to a loved one, buy a copy for your estate planning attorney or whoever is your trusted contact uh, in your traditional assets. Because again, it's not so easy recovering cryptocurrency from a decentralized location. There you go, listeners. Not a topic a lot of people think about on a regular basis, but as we're all plunging bravely and boldly going into a lot of these new assets out there, the rule book hasn't really been written yet, or maybe it has because Bill just wrote it. So check it out, The Essential Guide to Recovering Your Crypto Out There. For Even if you're not an estate planner, again, if you need a little help with that, check out Mr. Bill's work and give him a follow on Twitter while you're at it. He's at Senecal Capital, C-E-N-A-C-L-E, Capital, all one word. Of course, you can ask him your questions about crypto there, maybe about crypto estate planning, or maybe just traditional financial management. He tackles it all over there at Senecal at the end of the day. And, of course, you know where to go to check out all this data we've been talking about here on the show and quite a bit more, amberdata.io, the place to go to kick the tires and light the fire. That's going to do it for us on the network today. We're going to be dark tomorrow, which is not a usual thing. Usually we have a couple of shows hitting you a day here on the network, but the producers are being kind to me. They're allowing me to rest my voice. But back again with a double header on Wednesday, of course, everyone's favorite out there, Options Boot Camp, followed almost immediately by another great pro Q&A session for all of our pro folks. Got our buddy, Mr. Overby, the options guy himself, coming back to answer all of your questions. So if you're on the pro side Get in there, get those questions in now. I'm sure that'll be a popular session. If you're not on the pro side, what are you waiting for? Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro, the place to go to learn more. If you get in there now, you can be there in time for Wednesday's pro Q&A session. Of course, Thursday, our double dose of This Week in Futures Options and the Option Block. Probably going to get some live updates from the SIBO Risk Management Conference that's going on this week in Austin. So look forward to that. Definitely going to have some more of that on the Volatility Views episode on Friday, as well as coming back exclusively for our pro folks once again for Options Oddities. And then we're all off for the weekend to relax before we come back again next Monday, another episode of the Crypto Rundown. Stay safe out there, everybody. The Crypto Rundown is brought to you by Amber Data. If you're entering the digital asset class, you'll need access to granular on-chain and market data from multiple venues to power research, trading, risk management, and compliance. Amber Data delivers comprehensive data and insights into blockchain networks, crypto markets, and decentralized finance, empowering financial institutions to apply traditional finance methods to digital assets. Amber Data eliminates the infrastructure setup, integration challenges, and maintenance headaches to access digital asset data, reducing cost and time to market to enter the digital asset class. Learn more and download their digital asset data guide at www.amberdata.io. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the optionsinsider.com.